actually hooking away from tonight from Fernwood Fernwood tonight coming to you live with your host for tonight Mr. Barth Kimball tonight Barth's guest will be Kevin McCormick the six-year-old trombonist Harold Clemens with some startling news for tennis players Mrs. Lillian Lattimore with her new weight loss program and happy kind in the mirth makers and me I'm and now your host and mine, Mr. Barth Kimball. Thank you. Oh, gosh. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you and good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to what I like to think of as Furnace, Fernwood's finest hour. <laughs> it's a shame you only get to see half of it, but uh, that's where we are here in Fernwood tonight. We like to do things that way. We try to meet people halfway. In fact, if you think about it, each show is half music, half talk, half serious talk, and if Jerry were here, half wet. <laughs> I know that's the way you like it. And for me, well, where else would I go in Fernwood? Oh, here's half wet himself. <laughs> yes, you do. <laughs> Just a joke to warm things up, yeah? Um, where else would I go, really, this late at night in Fernwood? I'm glad to be here with these people. We're kind of partners, you know, you and I, and... Uh, I think you know that I've taken on a new partner, really. And no, 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 ladies, don't get worried. I'm not getting married or anything like that. So. <laughs> no, I'm still just a phone call away. Um, but if you've been watching the show uh, regularly, and shame on you if you haven't, you may know that a Firmwood lady named Mrs. Ruth Dunbar has decided to enter the entertainment industry as an agent. And uh, no jokes about agents here. I know people say an agent is a guy that can spend six months in a cave and come out with a suntan, you know, and all that kind of thing. It's not really true. But uh, since she has really no prior experience in this sort of thing, she's asked me to step in and kind of lend some of my valuable career guidance. I even had to show her how to put someone on hold. Isn't that funny? Uh. <laughs> she didn't even know that. <laughs> now, just so nobody gets the wrong idea about what I think could be the most important partnership in show business since uh, share divorce Greg Allman, uh, let me say right here that I will be participating in revenues earned by Mrs. Dunbar's clients at just as some small recompense for my advice and guidance. I suppose I could take the time out from my really busy schedule and lend this kind of assistance uh, and not take a cent, but uh, as someone a lot wiser than us once said, free advice is worth exactly what you pay for it, and I'm sure he was paid rather handsomely for that. <laughs> uh, our first client's actually going to be Mr. and Mrs. Dunbar's daughters. Did you know that? It's a coincidence. And you'll be seeing those uh, Dunbar daughters in a big production number right here on this show, so uh, try to be patient. And speaking of trying patience, um, here is our talent segment of Firmwood tonight. We call it Rocket to Stardom. <laughs> Thank you. Our first guest tonight is someone uh, really no one is talking about. <laughs> Maybe that's because he does not have the proper career guidance. I don't know. Let's have a look at a uh, talent who is not handled by the Mother Dunbar uh, Star Agency, which I believe is a... Uh, a Gimbal Co. Enterprises. <laughs> so, uh, why not earn the money, Jerry? Let's just see what uh, this little tyke is doing wrong, and uh, will you please do your best to welcome him as if you've heard of him and as if you cared, little Kevin McCormick.
Come on over here. Have a little seat here. How are you, Kevin? I'm Jerry Hubbard. Hi. Remember that name if you go places. <laughs> You might want to just but, sit back there and rest your bone over here. <laughs> Kevin, that trombone is longer than you are, isn't it? Especially when the slide part is... Well, it's is not up. longer than he was up there, I'll <laughs> tell you. <laughs> How do you get down to the studio? Did you come by yourself, like on a bus or something? Or does uh, someone someone bring you down, drive you down? My mom and dad. Your mom and dad, huh? Did, did, did they teach you how to play the trombone, too? No, yeah. No, nope, yep. Oh, not commit no, yourself. No, no, no. Your dad did. Well, uh -huh. he did a... Yeah. Does your father bother to mention to you that the trombone is a dead instrument? <laughs> no, matter of fact, I don't think he would even come with you. Really? <laughs> well, I guess that's why your father is driving you to the studio and I'm here. <laughs> Great, Kevin, I think you have a great deal of potential. I think one of the I think, Kevin, what Barth is trying to say, you have kind of a rare talent which is about to blossom, burst forth into uh, fruition, and Barth here could well be uh, your fertilizer. <laughs> well, Jerry, you sure know how to spread it around, don't uh, you? You know how to slip out talent, too. <laughs> yeah, up, cute kid, yes. Up to I my do. knees in it. Yeah. Nice talking to you, Kevin. And just stick around. We'll be right back after these important words. We're back. Our next guest is a reporter for the Fernwood Courier, that rag that masquerades locally as a newspaper. He claims to have sold an article that will soon be published in Sports Illustrated, which could be pretty good for him, yeah, I think. That's quite amazing. Um, please welcome Mr. Harold Clemens. <laughs> Donald, the trombonist? Hi. Hi. The trombonist. The trombonist. Just a thrill. <laughs> he's uh, not much smaller than that racket, is he? Or not much bigger than that racket. Yeah. Shorter. Shorter. Yeah, he's actually shorter. Yeah. Great, Jerry. Um, <laughs> now, I understand you're um, into sports reporting now, as well as your other duties. And uh, what's this big article of yours all about? Well, as you know, I'm one of the top tennis players in the area. Didn't and know it, but didn't know that. <laughs> Do yeah, now. I'm teaching on weekends, teaching tennis on mm -hmm. weekends. Good thing to know. Yeah. I decided to uh, write an article uh, designed to instruct certain pupils on how to improve their game. Well, that's exactly which pupils. I mean, what is this article called? It's called uh, Power Tennis for the Blind. <laughs> Power Tennis for the Blind. Uh -huh. That sounds kind of like a challenging concept. It uh, is. Thank you, Barth. Well, <laughs> the challenge, I guess, is part of playing tennis. Well, I think it's a credit to him that he has spent time uh, working with those people. I uh, do, too. Absolutely. A lot of people would leave them to their own devices. I'll tell you, what we're doing now is, uh, in order to help the blind player with his game, we're develop I've developed a, uh, a series uh, of uh, new kinds of equipment for the blind player. Right. All right. Uh, you're familiar with the wiffle ball? Sure. Yeah. The wiffle ball. Okay. I've de designed a tennis ball that has one whiff in it, so that when it's, when it's hit, it goes... And the faster it goes, the higher the frequency. So higher it's going pitch, to yeah. higher pitch. You probably know about that. Uh, there's probably a um, I doubt speed that he does. with the ball, the uh, higher the pitch or slower the pitch. Right. Slower the pitch. So but if you have a musical ear, it'll help you out playing tennis. Also, their hearing sense is way yeah. up there. Yeah, they have that advantage there. Now you ask. You ask, uh, how does the player know he's making the proper contact with the ball? Mm -hmm. Okay, that's design factor number two. We've designed a new racket for them. This isn't the one. It's still in research and development, but. The normal R &D. racket. What? R&D. R&D, as they say. <laughs> Research and development. Gosh. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. Uh, anyway, normal racket is strung with uh, gut strings or nylon strings. And uh, the new racket, of course, will be strung with guitar strings. Uh -huh. Now, <laughs> what that does, the uh, outer portion of the uh, basket, as we call it at the pro shop, is strung with your baser strings. And the center portion is strung with the tenor strings. Mm -hmm. So like middle C would be the sweet spot or something. Exactly. And uh, depending on where the impact of the ball is determines what chord it is. And you can tell where it is on the basket. <laughs> now, when you have like players playing, are they tuned to each other, that kind of thing? So that you have the harmony of the game? Yeah, you do. You know, uh, the Senior Chamber of Commerce had a, a, a doubles match last week that they sponsored. Mm -hmm. And uh, they, it was just a lovely thing to listen to. The, you know. It's a quartet, really. Boing, boing. They get playing enough, and they could probably make a little tune and songs up as they play, too. Sure. Uh, but it's like these uh, touch telephones. It's got to be quite a hobby. Absolutely. That's an idea for another book. Uh, but this one, this uh, article is called... Uh, 
<laughs> oh. <laughs> that was the backhand, too, wasn't yeah. it? <laughs> Tennis is a reflex game. Yeah. The lost chord there. <laughs> um, the book is called, uh, it's just an article at this point, isn't it? Called That's Power Tennis for the Blind. Are any plans for, for a book? Uh, actually, yes. You know, I'm um, so confident that the uh, article is going to do well. I've already designed the cover for the hardbound edition of the it's book beauty. I will write if the article is a success. <laughs> mm -hmm. There it is right there. I'll probably be about this thick, I figure, about that much information. So they should uh, look for it on the book stands. And, uh... mm -hmm. Blind people would be quite happy to see that, I think. Yeah. It's you know, it's good that a fellow like this, we, we need more teachers, uh, tennis pros here in, uh, in Fernwood. You know, I, I, was, so. I worked with a tennis uh, instructor once, and he was more concerned on how you appear on the court, the clothes you wear, and your style. I asked him what to do about my backhand, he recommended Juergen's lotion. <laughs> <laughs> While they're having fun and I'm not, we'll be right back. <laughs> with enough rhythm to brush their teeth. That's really something <laughs> incredible. These guys play, I think, with a lot of team spirit. They're way beyond that whole ego thing you have, thanks to years and years of working together. You don't even care who wins the song, who finishes first, do you? <laughs> That's great. You know, Hap, you're quite a guy. Why don't you come on over here and uh, rap with us a little bit, as you guys say. Hello. Hello. Hi. Our young trombonist. You think you know Jerry? Yes, yeah, Jerry. Jerry yes. I bet Jerry in the dressing room backstage. Mm -hmm. Green room. Great. I think the fellows have been drinking. They've been down at the Capri Lounge again. I'm sorry. Uh -oh. about that. Yeah, I notice when you leave the tempo and the yeah. music you is so the much aroma uh, wafts over yeah, to us. Going so much better. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, Hap, I know uh, you've been pretty busy lately with a pet project of yours, am I right? Oh, that's that's right. That's the charity work I've been doing. I've been entertaining the children out at the at the orphanage. It's so oh. wonderful. Mm -hmm. Isn't that beautiful? Charity work. That's incredible. Mm -hmm. Gee, I, it's nice. Now, you must get a nice kind of a warm glow on, almost knowing you're bringing just a little bit of sunshine to these kids. That's right, and it's tax deductible, too. Right? That's, <laughs> that's sort of just a way of that sunshine kind of reflecting back a little bit of it on you, I right, guess. That's right. Nice. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, when are you at the orphanage? Uh, every Saturday. You know, rain or shine, without fail. I uh, just love to go out there. I never miss it. It's wonderful. You know, I go out and I... I, I play some inspirational clarinet for them, and I do some knock-knock jokes. And, but but they, they don't get very far, because when I say knock-knock, they say, come in, and there's nothing else. <laughs> no, they're, but, so not, so they're not used to having that many visitors, I guess. It's kind I of know, a that's true. But all, what I really do is I go out, and I just spread love. Mm. To spread yeah, it if all. I could, uh, I hate to interject uh, this, Happy, but I happen to know about tax deductible uh, uh, work. You can't deduct work you do. It must, uh, by law, be a monetary contribution, I'm afraid. Oh? Yeah. <laughs> so that's every Saturday, huh? Hat? Well, not every Saturday. In fact, we're thinking of cutting it down. <laughs> Yeah, well, that's just terrific. I think a busy man like Happy taking time out of his schedule to go down and help those kids. You know, time is very precious to Hap, and they're lovely, lovely children. I think probably time is very precious to anyone your age. That's, uh, <laughs> that's true. <laughs> Great. Now, Hap, why don't you go back over there and see if you can't sober up the band a little bit, and uh, we'll be talking to you later. Happy time, our musical director. How about? You know, folks, uh, one problem that so many Americans share is the problem of being overweight, or if you prefer, obese, or chubby, plump, fat, absolutely humongous, <laughs> large butt. <laughs> Call it what you will. <clears throat> if you fit into any of these categories, and not into your pants, if you know what I mean, you, you might be especially interested in my next guest. Uh, she owns and operates one of the most extraordinary weight loss uh, clinics, in, I guess, in the whole world. Please welcome Mrs. Lillian Lattimore. <laughs> I said, have a seat. It'd be more like reduce your seat, wouldn't it? <laughs> <laughs> so, Ms. Lattimore, I understand that you uh, have a new program that's been very effective. Uh, can you tell us about very it? Very effective, very effective. You already know, um, there's a great many people go to uh, weight loss camps and uh, reducing centers okay. and uh, diet resorts, uh, mm -hmm. all those namby-pamby institutions. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. Well, what we are offering the chronically obese is a weight loss prison. <laughs> 
little nonsense there. Okay, yeah. In other words, you're talking, uh, is this an actual prison with bars on the, on the windows and oh. guards and everything? Well, you heard I said prison. Run exactly like a criminal prison. Except, <laughs> of course, you don't have to worry about uh, food being lousy, because there isn't any. <laughs> so, in other words, you just lock these people up and starve them. You got a better idea? <laughs> well, now, how do they spend their time in the meantime? Oh, well, uh, they sulk a lot. <laughs> they got up in the morning and they skip breakfast. And then they uh, walk around their cells until about noon, and then they skip lunch. Uh, then they go out to the yard for an afternoon walk, do some exercises, come back to their rooms. Just sit around and, and chew uh, the fat then. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> a little bit like that. Uh, oh, then uh, we take them all down to the cafeteria, and they just sit there and uh, skip dinner. Uh-huh. Uh, this causes a little depression. Yeah. But uh, in the long run, not as much depression as it would cause you if you were on the outside having to suffer the rejection of being overweight in this society. Oh, which is the worst. One thing you hate, you go down on the beach and you see those ladies go, Hi, Joan, and the bottom of their arm goes back and... <laughs> It's enough to make you just pack up your, your sandwiches, your cucumber slices, That's and right. get the heck off yeah. the beach. Yeah. And the back of the leg looks like a relief map of the world's great rivers. I know exactly. <laughs> That's not very you have to have a sense of humor if you're fat. Uh, now we... Uh, when you're fat, it's jolly, isn't it? Jolly just, well. Okay. Uh, so we made up a funny little twist. Okay. Is this your uh, There you go. You have a bad yeah. temper. And okay, any of the bigger uh, words there, uh, Jerry, you can just tell Now, if uh, this test doesn't make you smile, you're probably too fat. Okay. Mm -hmm. A little okay. self-test. Uh, self now, we we'll start with uh, question one. All right, I see. <laughs> have you ever had to widen the finger holes on your telephone dialer? <laughs> you That's bad. Got one up there. That's okay, bad. fine. <laughs> Uh, question two. When you walk, does any part of your body drag on the sidewalk? <laughs> question three. Do you get more than three calls a month from circus managers? <laughs> Four. If you jump up and down once, does it take more than five minutes for your body to stop moving? <laughs> what are you talking about? Or the people around you to stop moving, too. That, here's, here's one I or like. Or stop it. talking. Yeah, <laughs> that can be a problem, too. Get the, have you ever hurled a relative in the air uh, by sitting on the other end of the sofa? That's, uh, <laughs> now, that would depend on how heavy the relative was. Someone like Kevin down there might pop off with just mm -hmm. a 120 pounder to sit down heavy. Could happen. Absolutely. No, uh, Question uh, six here. If you play the accordion, do you have to get two people to hold it in front of you? <laughs> I walk back and forth. That's very good. <laughs> Or well, do people hesitate to drive their car around you because uh, there is an energy crisis? That, that shows that uh, Absolutely. it's a long drive, you know, is there a short way around? Those little skirts you see with honk and the road is yours right on the back of them. I'll help you pass, that kind of thing. Extra wide load, that's, uh, that's bad. Here's well, another one. <laughs> I don't think we have to read the entire panel. Oh, I see. Here. No, I... Did you ever wonder... Better give that back to yeah. me. Yeah. Did you ever wonder where weight goes when you lose it? <laughs> Probably there's a huge mountain of yellow fat someplace they're going to discover uh, out where the elephants die or something. One can only hope for that, Jerry. Now, what is the name of your place again? What are you calling it? The Last Resort. The Last Resort. Well, that's terrific, isn't it? Living off the fat of the land down there, aren't you? Okay, we'll be, uh, we'll be right back after this message. Are there any more following is a public service announcement. <clears throat> a terrible drought has struck the western part of the United States. It seems to have hit the state of California the worst, really, and Californians are being asked to cut back on water usages. Well, I, for one, don't think we in the state of Ohio should sit back idly and watch our fellow countrymen skip showers and only flush every second time. <laughs> Tonight, I want to start a water relief fund for California. Now, I know that we in Fernwood can't solve California's drought problems ourselves. <laughs> but we can make a token goodwill gesture to our friends out there so all of California will know that, hey, Fernwood cares, okay? <laughs> How about we all step out of our offices and our houses and out into the streets, every town, city, and village and hamlet here in the Fernwood area, 
Go into the streets, all of you people standing side by side, stretched from Fernwood to California. And with a man or woman at the end of the spigot, we pass water hand by hand. And all human being, all neighborly cross country bucket. Okay, how about that? Okay? I'll drink to that. Excuse me. You get a little dry speaking here. Say that's good. If you don't like that idea, try this one. Take any water you Fernwoodians can spare and send it to me here at the studio. We here at Channel 6 will put your water into a tank truck. Can we get this? Are we getting this? Fine. When that truck is full, I will personally drive it to sunny California sometime in the winter. And I will present the water to the governor of California or somebody who knows him or thinks he knows him. And I will wait there all winter long, if necessary, to see that this water is used to good advantage. You'll have the satisfaction of knowing that you will have helped a Californian flush his toilet or water his garden or maybe even fill his swimming pool. Water for California is needed now. Okay? Thank you and good night. Lillian Lattimore.